Uh, just so you know, Mayor Huseman, um, Councilwoman Alan Thomas is rebooting her iPad right now. So she's gonna try to rejoin shortly. So uh, hopefully in another minute or two, we'll have her back on. Okay, we can wait till then. Okay, Mayor Huseman, uh, Councilwoman Alan Thomas is back online and can hear and see us just fine now. Okay. All right, we'll get started. Uh, same introduction as last time. This is our first attempt at hosting a virtual meeting with the Zoom platform. This is a special meeting with a limited agenda. Please be sure to have your video camera on and be mindful that we are streaming this meeting live on Channel 8 and on our city's website. The chat function has been disabled to ensure that the public can see all portions of the meeting. The city clerk is the host of the meeting and I and our IT director will be the co-host. To prevent any disruption, all members and other staff will be muted except for myself as the mayor. If you wish to speak, please use the raise hand function and I will be able to call on you to speak and the clerk will unmute you. Any votes taken will require roll call votes. The clerk will call your name and unmute you for you to give your vote. No commentary is allowed while voting. This time we'll call a special meeting to order. Will the city clerk please call the roll? Mayor Huseman? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Frank? Present. Council Member Madera? Present. Council Member Alan Thomas? Present. Council Member Noble? Present. Council Member Wardiola? Present. Council Member Hurst? Present. Council Member Grimes? Present. Council Member Smith? Present. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, looks like everybody is present and accounted for, so no need for a motion to excuse. Uh, there is also no general citizen communication at special meetings and telephone access is limited as we're testing the system. Members of the public can view the meeting live on Channel 8 or on the city's website. This time we'll ask uh, Jenna Lowry to make a presentation on the Mile High Greyhound Project closing date of sale extension. Jenna, you are unmuted. Okay. Share my screen again. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so I'm just going to use the same presentation that I gave for our CCURA meeting. However, please note that um, City Council only needs to take action on one agreement in this presentation. Good evening, City Council members. I am here tonight on behalf of City staff and Del West to formally request approval on an extension for one of the executed contracts for the Mile High Greyhound Park Redevelopment Project. That contract is the master development agreement, which currently requires that the full plat for the Mile High Greyhound Park property be finalized and recorded by April 2nd, 2020. 
For those of you watching at home, please note that a closing deadline extension until June 1st, 2020 in the purchase and sale agreement was previously approved by the Urban Renewal Authority. So the purpose of my presentation tonight is to explain why both of those extensions are necessary and to request for the council to approve the extension to the master developer agreement. I will start off with a brief recap on, pro, um, on the progress that both parties have made over the last few months to meet the original closing deadlines. The three most notable actions include, first and foremost, work on the master subdivision plat. That plat includes all 12 tracks, the private park, right-of-way dedications, the regional stormwater detention pond, and the public improvement agreement. The second, Delwet's efforts to meet their funding requirements for the affordable housing project, and they have been successful in meeting those requirements. And lastly, the ongoing environmental testing conducted by both parties. So we'll focus in on the plat. So as you all know, this redevelopment project is complex, and so is the corresponding plat. At this point, staff in Del West are optimistic that the current plat can be corrected to begin its final approval process in April. However, in order for that plat to be approved, the following two issues must be resolved. First, some programmatic changes to the park, drainage, and connecting roads to the open space must first be made. These adjustments that are made in the plat also impact Del West's regional infrastructure package and their public improvement agreement. The second issue that needs to be resolved is um, making minor modifications to the legal description. In addition, this approval process will include public notice, public comment, and potentially city council action based on the nature of the public comments that we receive. Looking at the ongoing environmental work, as of today, both the city and Del West remain in active contact with the CDPHE. Del West is currently working to obtain a no further action letter by participating in the state's voluntary cleanup program. However, the current public health crisis has impacted Del West testing capacity, third party testing capacity, and the CDPHE's review process. Other key actions to date include the completion and approval of design standards, which have been used to review all of Del West submissions, progress on their infrastructure engineering. Del West has in fact received tax credit approval for the 4% low income housing project, and they will self-finance the single family home portion of the project. The Urban Renewal Authority has obtained necessary water resources for closing, both parties have prepared to escrow funds for closing. And lastly, the Urban Renewal Authority's owner representative continues to work with this site's hotel prospect. Despite all of this good work and the efforts made by both staff and Del West, um, it does not appear as if closing prior to, prior to April 1st or finishing the plat by April 2nd are feasible. Much like impact on environmental testing, the COVID crisis has greatly impacted our final processing of title work. And also it has prevented staff and Del West from having our biweekly, oftentimes more frequently than that meetings to sit down and work on challenges to get to close with the plat. As such, uh, staff is recommending and formally requesting that an extension on the plat deadline be made until May 20th. At this point, I will go ahead and open the floor up to council to ask any questions that you may have of myself, other staff, or Del West. Anybody have any questions? Any discussion? Anybody wish to make a motion? Madera. Move to approve an amendment to the PSA to expend, extend the closing deadline to June 1st. Um, I think all we are doing is the master developer agreement plat, correct? Correct. Just the master development agreement until May 20th, if council agrees. Okay, so moved. 
Councilman Hurst. Second. I have a motion and a second to extend the plat deadline to May 20th, 2020. Is there any discussion? Uh, Mr. Sheasley. Thank you. Um, Mayor Huseman, just checking, I uh, wanna make sure I believe the actual action that needs to be taken is that the purchase and sale agreement deadline to June 1st, not the master development agreement. Oh, I apologize. I caused a lot of unnecessary confusion. Can we get uh, you two to remake your motion, please? Councilman Hurst, you are, will not unmute you. There you go. Councilman Hurst, you're unmuted. Uh, hold on. I would second the amendment to, to fit. Uh, let's let Councilman Madera start. Councilman Madera, do you want to amend your motion? Uh, yeah, I'll uh, amendment to my original motion to extend the purchase and sale agreement to deadline to June 1st. Thank you, Councilman Hurst. Councilman Hurst. I second that amendment. I have a motion and a second to amend the closing deadline to June 1st. Is there any discussion on this? Okay. Seeing no discussion, we'll take a roll call vote. Councilmember Madera? Yes. Councilmember Alan Thomas? Yes. Councilmember Noble? Yes. Councilmember Wardiola? Yes. Councilmember Hurst? Yes. Councilmember Grimes? Yes. Councilmember Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank? Yes. Mayor Huseman? Yes. Passes nine to zero. Thank you. Next up, we have administrative business. Uh, the first item of administrative business is the ratification of a special meeting action on March 19th through 20th. The city council held an emergency meeting via Google poll to authorize me to sign on to a letter of the U.S. Conference of Mayors advocating for coronavirus relief. All members unanimously consented to the meeting and authorized my signing. Ratification is required pursuant to our emergency meeting ordinance. Right now I'm looking for a motion and a second to ratify the actions of the council during an emergency special meeting on March 19th and 20th. Mayor Pro Tem. I motion to ratify the actions of the council during an emergency special meeting on March 19th, 20th. Councilwoman Alan Thomas. I second the motion. I have a motion and a second to um, ratify the special meeting that was held via Google poll on March 19th and 20th. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Councilman Hurst, do you have discussion? No, sir. All right, no, we'll sir. Seeing no discussion, we will take a roll call vote. Council member Madera. Yes. Council member Alan Thomas. Yes. Council member Noble. Yes. Council member Wardiola. Yes. Council member Hurst. Yes. Council member Grimes. Yes. Council member Smith. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank. Yes. Mayor Huseman. Yes. Passes nine to zero. Very good. That passed unanimously. Thank you for your support on that. That was good for us to sign on to that. Next up is uh, council meeting schedules. We'll ask uh, city manager McRoom to provide an update and recommendations regarding city meetings. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? 
City Council will recall that you previously canceled all regularly scheduled City Council meetings through the end of this month. You also canceled uh, any regularly scheduled board and commission meetings. Uh, given the extended nature of the crisis, uh, it would be my recommendation that you extend that public meeting cancellation through April 17th. Uh, last week, I extended the public closure of city facilities through uh, April 17th as well. So all city facilities uh, continue to be closed to the public through at least April 17th. Uh, so it would be my recommendation that City Council continue its cancellation of regularly scheduled City Council meetings and any regularly scheduled Board and Commission meetings through the 17th. That does not mean special meetings could not occur. Uh, I am aware the Housing Authority uh, may be required to take an action related to the Mile High Greyhound Park. Uh, they could still do so uh, by scheduling a special meeting. So that would be my recommendation. Any discussion on this item, Councilman Hurst? Yeah, I think um, you know, I agree. We, we need to be in concert with the metro area in the state. Um, the one thing I would ask is obviously there's a lot going on right now. You guys are working on keeping everybody safe and I appreciate those efforts. Uh, one thing I'd like us to focus on is an exit plan. Um, I don't think you go from where we're currently at today or where we foresee ourselves in the future to back to just 100% normal overnight. And so if we can start planning towards the exit plan and how we're going to uh, successfully transition back to um, what we would consider normal life in the past, um, that would also be good for us to plan ahead just to give our citizens some type of direction as to how this, how we're gonna work our way back into uh, our normal everyday lives. That would be much appreciated, but you guys have done a fantastic job so far. I appreciate that. Just trying to push us forward um, beyond April 17th. Thank you, Councilman Hurst. Any other members wishing to discuss? Eric Huseman. Yes, sir. Just as a point for the uh, members of the city council boards and commission subcommittee, um, that would then extend our interview date, which we currently have scheduled for April 4th out to an indefinite time. Um, I would ask that until we're able to meet at a regular subcommittee meeting on our normal Monday night time, um, that I'll go ahead and email out those people that have applied and push that out indefinitely unless one of the members has uh, a preference otherwise. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. I would just suggest that we move it to the next quarter, the interviews, Dylan, rather, because I, I would think we would be out of this at that time. So I would just suggest we move them to the next quarterly date so that we stay on that quarterly schedule. It is what it is. Yep. I'm happy to do whatever the committee members would like. Any other opinions from the committee members? Councilman Hurst. Jose, uh, you agree with that? I mean, I I'm good with doing that or um, if we have a way to virtually do interviews, I guess we could we can resort to that. I I my biggest thing is all of these committees are very important to the to our success for the rest of this year. Um, and I want to make sure that we're, we're filling the people who are um, wanting to give back to the community. So I'm willing to hear other options, but I'm also on board with just extending them out uh, because that seems like the most natural resolution. Councilman Wadiola. Yeah, I think uh, I'm fine with moving it to the next quarter. Um, I think they're pretty flexible too, as long as we, uh, Dylan communicates with them, I'm all right with moving it to the next quarter. All right, Councilwoman Smith. I'm okay with moving it to the next quarter. In the world we're in, it just kind of makes sense to move it back because everything else is being moved. 
Very I good. appreciate that. Thank you very much, Mayor. Mm -hmm. So still looking for a motion and a second regarding what we do with our council meetings and board and commission meetings through April 17th. Councilman Madera. Um, I'd like to make a motion to council all council meetings and boards of commissions meetings through April 17th, unless a special meeting is called. Okay, and have a motion to cancel all council meetings and board and commission meetings through April 17th, unless a special meeting is called. Uh, Councilwoman Noble. I'd like to second that. I have a motion and a second for that. Is there any discussion? Councilman Hurst. No, sir, I was looking to second that. I'm good, no discussion. Seeing no discussion, we'll take a roll call vote. Councilmember Madera. Aye. Councilmember Allen Thomas. Yes. Councilmember Noble. Yes. Councilmember Wardiola. Yes. Councilmember Hurst. Yes. Council Member Grimes. Yes. Council Member Smith. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank. I didn't catch your vote, Mayor Pro Tem Frank. Yes. Thank you. Mayor Huseman. Yes. Passes nine to zero. Very good. And that passed unanimously. We will suspend all council meetings and board and commission meetings through April 17th unless a special meeting is called. That is all we have on our agenda for this evening. Councilwoman Noble. Um, yes, I would like to ask if we could discuss for a moment the idea of having a resident and business relief package that we could potentially look at. I know the staff is really busy and they've done such a tremendous job. Thank you so much. Brian, it's really been great, but um, I am reading so much and hearing from so many residents who are concerned about things, for example, their um, taxes that are due. I believe that the county is going to be considering delaying um, the uh, taxes, county, uh, the property taxes, for example, but perhaps we might be able to um, urge them to do that. There is a question about um, uh, memberships at the Parks and Rec Center also. And I don't know how to do it, but I would like to just put this forward. Mr. McBroom. Thank you, Councilwoman Noble. Uh, it's a question I've had from several of you wondering uh, what's the city's role in minimizing the economic impact to individuals and businesses. Uh, so I think there likely is a role for the city uh, because state and federal aid is still evolving, uh, my recommendation would be allow us to continue some work that we've started already to understand uh, how state and federal aid would come to bear on individuals and businesses in our community. And then with that information, we can start to identify uh, what gaps might there be that we would uh, lay out for city council that city council could then act on. At this point, it might be uh, premature for us to take action, especially uh, uh, knowing that there's federal aid coming that uh, that hasn't been approved by uh, by uh, Congress yet. Councilwoman Noble. Pretty taxes are due on April 10th. So that's a question. And when there might be other uh, business taxes due as well. And then the second one is, what are we doing regarding our court and potential evictions? Are we following the federal model on delaying any um, eviction, uh, eviction cases for six months or um, what's the situation there? Thanks. Yes. Oh, Mr. Sheasley. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, the city's municipal court does not handle evictions. It only handles municipal offenses and traffic tickets coming through our court. We also don't handle any domestic violence issues. So those wouldn't be within our court. Councilwoman Noble. And that remains is about the uh, property taxes. And if we would wish to vote to urge um, the county to extend the date, the due date for property taxes. <clears throat> so are you asking permission to have this conversation for the, so that a motion can be made? Is that correct? That's correct. So my understanding, because this is a special meeting and that was not on the agenda, that the entirety of the council will have to agree to take up that discussion. So uh, Mr. Uh, City Clerk, will you please uh, poll the members? Sure. Council Member Madera? Yes. Council Member Alan Thomas? Yes. Council Member Noble? Yes. Council Member Wardiola? Yes. Council Member Hurst? Yes. Council Member Grimes? Yes. Council Member Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank? Yes. Mayor Huseman? Yes. Carries nine to zero. All right, Councilwoman Noble, the floor is yours. You can bring this up to the council. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, because the property taxes are due on April 10th and there's a lot of concern, we're not getting back to our regular meetings until April 17th at the earliest. I also understand that the county will be taking a look at extending the deadline since these are county property taxes. Of course, we have fire, we have metro districts, we have school districts, and we have our own uh, bonds that are associated with this. So there is a um, a ripple effect. There's no question. All of this is extraordinary and there are ripple effects on all of it. But I would like to uh, make a motion that we urge the county to um, delay the property tax deadline until July 15th. Um, okay, before we go there, my understanding on property taxes is you have two options. Option number one is you pay it in two split payments. The first payment being due sometime in February, the second payment being due in June, or you pay it in one lump sum in the uh, period of April. So what are you trying to encourage them to delay? I'm trying to encourage them to do the same thing that the state is doing on state taxes and federal taxes. And in this case, these these are the property taxes and to delay it until the same date, which is July 15th. So it would be both the April 10th taxes that are due and the June taxes that are due, the second half taxes that are due would be delay, delayed until uh, June 15th. I don't know what the um, motion is that's going to be for, going to happen before the county, but I would like to be able to say that Commerce City is encouraging the county to delay the property taxes until July 15th and allow our residents and businesses to uh, get their feet underneath them, hopefully by then. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Uh, Deputy City Manager Tinklenberg. Yes, sir. Um, I have the uh, residential property tax bill in front of me. Just for clarification, the uh, full payment is due April 30. Oh. If you want to split your payments, the first half is due March 2, the second half is due June 17. Thank you for that clarification. Councilman Hurst. Yeah, I wasn't really going to uh, speak on this, but my feeling is that we, we kind of stick with what the state and the feds are doing just to create uh, one singular uh, less confusing action. Councilman Madera? Yeah, I would agree. I'd, I'd second this and um, I would just propose that we write a, a letter to the county. All right. 
So I have a motion and a second for us to encourage Adams County to adopt a property tax holiday until July 15th, which would be consistent with both the state and federal filing dates for income tax. Is there any discussion on that item? Seeing no discussion, we'll take a roll call vote. Council Member Madera? Yes. Council Member Alan Thomas? Yes. Council Member Noble? Yes. Council Member Wardiola? Yes. Council Member Hurst? Yes. Council Member Grimes? Yes. Council Member Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank? Yes. Mayor Huseman? Yes. Carries nine to zero. Very good. Um, uh, staff can draft that letter and we'll figure out signatures after it's drafted. Yes, Mr. McBroom? All right, all right, and that is the end of our agenda. Seeing no other items for discussion, we are adjourned. But, okay, we are not adjourned. I already called it. We are adjourned. <laughs>